done some of those systematic tests, let's go in here and create a custom performance test and let's do a ladder test. So I'm going to go in here and create a new test. Now the ladder test is great because it creates a ton of stress, which I'm going to show you here in a second. I'm going to do multiple distances and we, we all know that wedge distances, like wedge distance control is really, really important. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to set my yardages and let's just do 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, and 100. Right? I'm going to do nine tests. And then this one, I've set the criteria over here to strokes gained. So I'm going to say, it, and let's just go minus 0.10. So what that essentially means is that when our player is hitting a shot to 60 yards, they need to hit it within minus 0.1 of whatever tour average is. Right, So that would be relative to um, what a tour player would hit 60 yards, they, this player could be a little bit worse so that obviously they have a chance to win because we want it to be stressful, but we also want to create an opportunity that the players can, you know, compete and, and win the end of the game, right? So if I did this, this is my wedge, my wedge distance, and then I can go over here. I'm going to do wedge distance test, and I'm going to play that. And let me show you a live version of how this works inside that ladder game so that you can see this for what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so while I want, before I get started on this, what I want to show you is you see how I had set the threshold at minus 0.1. So minus 0.1 gets, gives me a circle size of 11 feet, whereas the tour average from 60 yards is nine feet. So now if I hit a ball, right, and I try to hit this ball 60 yards, Right? It's only going to allow me to move on to the next thing. So that was 64, right? I hit it 15 feet. So that was minus 0.24, right? So on that shot, I lost minus 0.24 shots. So if I do it again, let's see if I can do this and hit this one to 60 yards. So if I hit that to 60 yards and I get it inside of it, then it's going to allow me to move on to my next ladder of 65 yards. However, if I do that and I miss, and I miss at 65, it then drops me back to where I was at 60. It does not let me advance onto the next thing. So if I go like 60 and then 65 and then 70 and then 75 and then I miss, it goes back to 70. So that really, it creates a stress so that every shot counts, which is just like golf, right? This allows the players and some of your elite college players, junior players, you know, elite amateurs, tour players, or just the recreational guy who's super passionate to get better, it allows them to practice and try to feel their heart beating, which like I said at the beginning, it gives you an opportunity for so many other ways for you to teach your player other than just, hey, can you hit a seven iron good, right? Yes, that's important, but that's not really golfing. We want to make it so that your players can play under stress. So these ladder games are great because if they hit a ladder and then they miss, they fall back and they can't go on until they do these in sequential order without failing. And you can set the parameters. You got to kind of learn, hey, what is the baseline for the player and their skill level? Because like I said, you wouldn't want them doing a test and just never win, right? There's kind of this threshold and that's where you can be amazing as a coach to just know, hey, where is it on the threshold based upon strokes gain or the combine score that says, this is going to challenge this player, but it also gives them a chance to be stressed out, but also a chance to win. And that's the boundary that you're trying to walk as a coach. So this is the ladder test. So we went through this free play, we went through the systematic, we went through the ladder. Now let's go to the task-oriented testing and show you what that's all about.